You must take the struggle forward again. The struggle never ended. Aluta continua. Aluta. We have forgotten our sporting roots in this country, totally. We have forgotten what it has done for us, we have forgotten what it has meant for us, and we have forgotten what it can do for us. When we begin to rebuild a truly representative South African sporting structure, we begin on the basis of truth rather than the basis of lies and deception. The defeat of apartheid gets written in, in, uh, through individual heroic acts of one liberation movement. With all this distortion in history, Mandela and the ANC being called the liberators, although today people are so hurt, this corruption, this dishonesty and all this grief, but uh, Mm, they don't want to draw the correct conclusion. It is as if something has gone wrong and they can't understand it. Who writes the history? Who determines what goes into the syllabuses? Who determines what shall be taught in schools? Those that for the moment control uh, the, the power and the central controlling party is our present uh, ruling class. So it would not suit their purposes for the truth to be spoken in that way. Well, I think it would be a, a real disgrace if the, if the, the struggle of the non-racial sports movement in South Africa, which was underpinning the struggle in New Zealand and around the world, if that's not recognised by the people of South Africa, there is a whole history there which is so important to the liberation struggle. Who was consulted when the bid was put forward? To what extent were the people of South Africa asked for an opinion? And above all, were they told what the cost was likely to be? I just spent the last four months in Mpumalanga researching and gathering information about the saga around the Imbombela 2010 World Cup Stadium. Now if you want a case study in abuse of power, political assassinations, poisoning of individuals, death threats, tender fraud, you name it, it's there. It's there in Mpumalanga, in, in, in Bombela, around that stadium involving very powerful people from national and provincial and other kinds of levels. Now, that has taken place, but what has resulted as a, as a result of that, poor communities, the Matsafeni community, who, by the way, the local municipality attempted to jip out of their land for one rand, 60 hectares for one rand they wanted to pay. Uh, we spent so many billions, maybe uh, estimates are in 60 billion to get a World Cup when Dennis Brutus was saying, no, no, before we have at least a decent social democracy. 
don't be spending on these luxury games like uh, a World Cup. I mean, everybody was delighted for a while, but now we've got uh, 10 mainly empty stadiums and a huge hangover from that party. The construction industry is going to do very well out of 2010, no doubt about that. And the hotel industry is going to do very well about 2010. There is hardship in our townships. We have no water, we have no lights, we have... There are so many things we do not have. But Lord, we have sport, you know, we've got sporting heroes. So that's being fed to them as a nation-building force in their lives. So people forget that uh, the very people who are telling them to fly their flags on a Friday and to blow their whatevers, you know. These are the people who are living off the fat of the land and are helping themselves in the service of a great economic force which the people do not have control of until they, they begin to take charge of their lives. <laughs> As a result of this kind of a behavior that is happening at political and other levels, it's galvanizing people. People are beginning to speak out. But it's a very dangerous thing in our day and age to be a rebel, to speak out, because immediately the finger is pointed at you. I was quite worried that the elites actually pulled off an amazing display of um, sort of razzle-dazzle of bread and circus. And they had enough little freebies for the masses, the fan parks. Those were great. I, I was at the fan park and, and the beach in Durban a lot. And I think those were lovely, but you know, if I was worried that the elites could confuse the masses by giving them some you know, circuses uh, the way the Romans used to, um, I was proved wrong uh, within three or four weeks. The largest and most militant strike uh, in recent years broke out, and it continued, and many more service delivery protests sprung up again. There were 10,000 protests between 2005 and 2006. Unrest areas in South Africa, the highest anywhere in the world. I know that people are being put out of their homes. I know that people's shacks are being demolished. I know that cement is being diverted from the possible building of hospitals to the building of stadiums. The country is in a mess. Our society is in a mess. It's riddled with violence huge social and economic inequality, vicious corruption, gangsterism, drug trafficking, the pandemic of AIDS, ill health. And it doesn't matter that you, you have unseated ex-president Mbeki from the horse on his road to Damascus. The point is that even if Jacob Zuma jumps on that horse, its name is still neoliberalism.